The Cultural Revolution officially began in May 1966 and ended towards the end of 1976 when Mao Zedong died. The post-Mao Chinese government under the control of Deng Xiaoping has been promoting the idea that the Cultural Revolution brought the Chinese economy to the brink of collapse. Professor Mobo Gao was trained as a linguist in Chomsky and theoretical linguistics. In his eight years of staying in the UK, Gao found that the general understanding of Mao and the Cultural Revolution he encountered was counterintuitive and different to his own beliefs and understanding. After some work on the Chinese language, one outcome of which is the publication of Introduction to Mandarin, Gao put linguistics aside to enter the field of contemporary Chinese politics by writing about the village where he was born and brought up. In his first Gao Village book, Gao argues that the Cultural Revolution did not bring the rural economy to the brink of collapse, but rather, in terms of education and health care, represented the best period in the history of Gao Village until the 21st century. Professor Gao's cross-disciplinary work on Gao Village has been well received by the academic community in the West, but the Chinese version published is still prohibited in mainland China. In response to publications such as Private Life of Chairman Mao by Li Jiasui and Mao the Unknown Story by Rong Chang, Gao published The Battle of China's Past, Mao and the Cultural Revolution, in which Gao repudiates many of the claims made by both Li and Chang. Gao argues that the way that Chang was promoted by the Western media was an intellectual scandal. Hello and welcome to Professor Mo Bo Gao who will be introducing his works with us today. Thank you, Professor Gal, for joining us today. What has been the reception of your book, The Battle for China's Past, Mao and the Cultural Revolution? Um, there are basically two kinds of receptions. Uh, the academic community uh, has largely been silent. There are only two journals that have reviewed that book. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, I regularly receive unsolicited uh, emails from people all over the world, from the USA, uh, UK, Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, India, and of course China and also South America. And um, for they expressed the appreciation for the book for telling what they called the naked truth. And in fact, last week, this is the end of year 2016, and the book was published in 2008. Last week, I received an email from Romania, and uh, the reader said she was shocked and struck when she first read the book, and the book changed her life. Uh, but in general, I received lots of emails from high school students um, asking me to clarify for this and that because they're doing projects on China. Why is the Cultural Revolution such a controversial topic? There are a number of reasons. One is that uh, the aim of the Cultural Revolution, from my understanding, was to change the mentality of people and to do that kind of things is very hard. And secondly, um, the Chinese political and intellectual elite were the victims of during the Cultural Revolution. So after the death of Mao, um, these people start to write about their experience. And therefore, um, their uh, experience, of course, is not that good because they were victimized. So the Cultural Revolution is controversial because the origin was very idealistic. But in practice, there was a victimization and violence Therefore, um, you have different ways of looking at it. And why did you want to write such a book? Well, that has something to do with the previous question. It's controversial. Um, on one hand, the Chinese political and cultural elite uh, were victims of the Cultural Revolution. And after the Cultural Revolution, they had resources to write about it. But on the other hand, the vast majority of the Chinese people like the peasants, the workers, they were not victims of the Cultural Revolution and they benefited in many ways, but they don't have resources to write history. So what I've been trying to do is to write from the perspective of the non-elite in China. That's why I wrote the book. 
So why did you place Mao and the Cultural Revolution together in the title of this book? In my opinion, uh, there wouldn't have been the Cultural Revolution without Mao. Therefore, any assessment of the Cultural Revolution has to include an assessment of Mao. And that's why I put them together. So you want to present a balanced view of Mao and the Cultural Revolution. In what ways did the Cultural Revolution bring about positive outcomes to China? There are uh, quite many, and uh, I've just listed a few here. The first one is that uh, rural health and education uh, had been improved greatly during the Cultural Revolution. The second one is that uh, lots of in agricultural infrastructure like irrigation projects uh, had been built during the Cultural Revolution. And these projects benefit China's agriculture today. The third one is gender equality. Uh, gender equality was something that is, was radically promoted during the Cultural Revolution. And uh, the other one that I can say here is the ideas and practice on new forms of literature and art, especially performing arts like the Peking Opera, for instance. And that was a great achievement as well. And finally, um, I, what I think is um, grassroots democracy was experimented during the Cultural Revolution. And that actually uh, still uh, impacts today. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. It's been very My insightful. Pleasure. Thank My you. Pleasure. Professor Gao is currently working on two books, one a continuation from Gao Village and the other about the political and economic perspective on the production of knowledge of China. The Gao Village book is a sequel to a portrait of rural life in modern China. It provides an update on the development of Gao Village since 1997 where the original novel concludes. The book not only documents the tremendous changes occurring since then but also discusses the problems and issues relating to the future development of rural China. The second book, about the production of knowledge of China, is in a sense a sequel to Professor Gao's previous book, The Battle for China's Past. Through a critique of the politically correct understanding of China by the truth manufacturing elite, both within and outside China, Professor Gao aims to deconstruct the political and economic rationale behind the truth manufacturing of China.